Hey to all you QRPers out there, this is Dave with QRP Fun. Uh, today I'm looking at something that just came in uh, from the GQRP Club. Uh, it's the Limerick Sudden 40 meter receiver kit. Uh, in case you don't know about GQRP, uh, it's a really worthwhile organization if you're interested in amateur radio QRP operation. Uh, they have lots of great books. Um, if you join GQRP, you get uh, four times a year the Sprat, uh, which is a terrific uh, publication with different QRP designs, articles for accessories, and different educational outreach um, to help you enjoy the hobby, at specifically this uh, subset, uh, low power uh, operation and construction. So let's take a look. At this kit. Now uh, this work uh, for the panels, uh, this is very interesting, they have solder pads uh, for Manhattan style construction um, and it's also part of the case. So this is the front panel, this is the back panel, this is the circuit board. You have also included our uh, left and right sides, the top. Uh, here's the other. Here's the other. Uh, uh, the other side to it. And uh, I assume these are two little tiny um, sort of brackets to hold everything together on the sides to screw things into. Also included in the kit are different bags of components. Uh, this right here seems to be the NE602 and the LM386 along with uh, polyvericon, some capacitors. Uh, in here is the band specific components for 40 meters. Uh, you can buy this kit for 20 meters um, also. <clears throat> These are some, looks like some Toyo uh, uh, inductors and some capacitors. And finally, you get a bag here uh, full of the uh, different front panel knobs <clears throat> and controls. You have uh, some nice plastic knobs, some switches, um, some, uh, some power jacks, and some other uh, different connections to put this kit all together. All in all, a nicely packaged little kit. And I'm going to get to reading the manual here. Uh, and doing some construction. Really looking forward to this. So stay tuned for more. Now, as I said before, uh, this is quite a unique layout. I didn't give uh, proper credit. This method generally is Manhattan style construction, but it's called the Limerick method. Um, and uh, uh, Rex W1REX uh, came up with this. It's named for uh, a place which many QRP uh, rigs are named for places, Limerick, Maine. Uh, so um, again, it has a circuit board, it has the panels for the case. Uh, now along these uh, areas here where, the, where, where it demarks the different um, sections of the case as well as the main board, uh, it's scored. And uh, if you're careful, and hopefully if I'm lucky, uh, these will snap off, yes. So this snaps off, it's the back of the case with the power and antenna. I'll put it over there since I probably won't be using that yet. This is the front of the case with the gain, the tuner, and a slot for the phones as well as the little QRP Club logo there. The sudden receiver, so I'm gonna snap this off and put it aside. Uh, so there's the circuit board uh, with the reference for all the components uh, where each thing goes. Now these pads uh, will be um, uh, will be covered with uh, a little solder uh, and they will hold uh, little bits of um, solder um, on the pads. So I'll pre-solder those before I put each piece in. So let's put that here. This is also um, the side and top. I'm going to snap that off. Okay, there we go. Uh, and they recommend that you, you smooth out these sides with some emery. I'll look for some emery cloth. 
So we have both sides put aside there. Uh, and this would be the top. Now these strips along here are for adhesion of the case. This is where uh, you'll actually join uh, the pieces together with, with solder, hopefully at a good right angle. We'll see how good my craft is there. So I'm going to put these pieces aside. Uh, and these are the little these are little side strips before the whole thing is put together. Holds the front, bottom, uh, circuit board, and um, and back together before the rest of the parts are put on. So I'm going to snap these two things in half. Let's see, that's a little harder because there's not as much leverage here. There we go. So now all of the pieces are ready for there. We'll keep that aside and we'll turn our attention to the circuit board here. Uh, the next step for any kit really is to, um, is to inventory the parts. So I'm going to go through, check off that I have all of the parts. Otherwise I might have to contact uh, Tony Fishpool or some of the other great guys at QRP. GQRP for, for additions, but I suspect this kit is fully intact. So hi, it's Dave from QRP Fun here. Uh, I've made a lot of progress with the GQRP sudden receiver. Um, got all of the inductors, capacitors, and resistors installed. Took a big jump from the last time uh, we've looked at this thing. But let's take a let's take a quick look at this thing. This is done Manhattan style. Uh, there are the inductors. You see, I have not put the ICs in yet, but I've put the IC holders in. And you solder these little these little edges here. This is a real gotcha for this thing. Um, soldering these edges and getting them straight, at least for me, was a bear. Um, I had one that got crooked, and then uh, the case will not fit very well later on, so you've got to fix that. So I did get that fixed. And I did get the front on, the front panel, and now it's looking a bit more like a little receiver. I'm kind of uh, excited. I'm going to take a little break here because uh, I want to go around and clean up some of the flux that came off the soldering that's spattered around the board. So once I clean that up, I'll continue with the construction of this, but uh, it's going pretty well. I don't know if it works yet, but uh, we shall see. Uh, get back to you a little okay. bit later. So the everything has been installed. Every single part is in the um, sudden receiver. Uh, all the panel switches. I uh, even installed the NE602 and the LM386. Uh, now, before the smoke test, as they call it, which we don't want it to be positive for the smoke test, <laughs> um, I'm going to go back and I'm going to double check with a magnifying glass and a multimeter for continuity or what I'd hope to be non-continuity or non-shorting and then uh, and then we can go to the phase where we tune it up but it's very important to check your work uh, I put probably five or six hours into this project and I'd rather it not go up in smoke so uh, the extra time checking is just uh, prudent and good practice uh, so I'll be back in just a minute Okay, welcome back. Uh, so one of the one of the ways I need to do to compare this uh, sudden receiver is to compare it to something that is known. Uh, this is my K1. Uh, it's now picking up some uh, CW on seven zero one four. Uh, so uh, and it's booming in quite quite strong. So now I'm going to see what kind of signals, if any, the sudden receiver picks up. So I'm going to hook my, I'm going to hook the same antenna that, that this is running from uh, into the sudden and see, power it up for the first time and see how that goes. Stand by.
as well. But uh, very good, and I appreciate uh, uh, your uh, uh, talking to me a second time. Pleasure is mine, though. The pleasure is all mine. Well, you be careful driving, Rob. You be careful there, and uh, uh, you've had a long day, but uh, 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 hopefully a, a good evening there, and uh, and hopefully you have uh, more good DX. Uh, that uh, uh, Yesu and the Apple Fire and the screwdriver antenna is doing you a great job. Uh, uh, this uh, I'm going to say 73s. Uh, thank you so much for coming back to me. To me, you have a very, very Merry Christmas, uh, blessed Christmas to you and your family. Zero KTD, mobile W B two M H J. Go ahead, Rob.